Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Joe, and I think that vinyl sounds better than digital. I've picked my side, I've squatted up, found my set. Um, I am on team vinyl. It literally, lately, has been blowing my mind. It sounds so good. Now, that's been kind of a controversial topic for a while, and uh, stick around, we'll get into that. But for now, uh, kind of for the vinyl community, um, you're going to be seeing a lot more of me, and uh, I love the vinyl community, by the way, shout out to everyone. And um, I figured for you guys, uh, since I'm going to be buying a lot more vinyl now, I um, figured I'd start showing some of it. I got a pretty good record store that I go to. It's a little over an hour for me, but I like it nonetheless. And I uh, found some pretty cool stuff. So I figured I'd go ahead and share some of them with you. So first up, I actually found this the other day. Um, it was only $9. And that is Eye in the Sky from Alan Parsons. And uh, being an 80s baby slash 90s kid... Growing up in the early 90s, particularly 91, 92, 93. Uh, <laughs> there's a song on here that is really, really means a lot to me and probably does to a lot of people and kids uh, during that time. If you know the reference I'm making, uh, shoot it down in the comments. But uh, so this is definitely really cool. I Side one is Sirius, and then which goes into Eye in the Sky, which is a very, very good song. Uh, I'm pretty sure Eye in the Sky is in Grand Theft Auto V, side note. You got Children of the Moon, Gemini, Silence and I, and then on side two we got You're Gonna Get Your Fingers Burned, and then Psycho Babble, Psycho Babble, excuse me, Mamma Gamma, Step by Step. And old and wise. Now, the thing about Alan Parsons, uh, I noticed that they used this. Isn't that like the Illuminati? I don't know. Something like that, but kind of. I guess this is where we got our units of measure from. Uh, that's pretty cool, but. Yep, so this is an original. Uh, I don't know when it was pressed. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm still learning a lot about vinyl and things like that. But um, I'm really digging the original pressings from back when they were made. Um, there's another thing that I'm kind of digging on that uh, a friend of mine over at Fading Petals kind of brought to my attention. And uh, we'll get more into that later too. But uh, I'm really liking these original albums and other albums that kind of fall into a certain criteria we'll get into later so speaking of chicago um my dad got me into him this is john prine sweet revenge um he was called the maywood mailman and maywood is a suburb of chicago much like what we're pretty much in right now John Prine is probably one of my favorite singer-songwriters, favorite guitar player. He, I love his style. Um, my dad got me into him, and, uh, well, my dad got me into most music. Yeah, he passed away recently, and uh, he, was a, he was a hell of a guy. So we got Side One, Sweet Revenge. Number Two, Please Don't Bury Me. Christmas in Prison. Christmas in Prison. Dear Abby, Blue Umbrella, then Often is a Word I Seldom Use. On side two, you got Onomatopoeia, Grandpa Was a Carpenter, The Accident, Things Could Be Worse, and then Mexican Home, A Good Time, and then Nine Pound Hammer. This is an awesome album. I'm looking for his first album as well, and of, well, probably all albums I can find of John Prine, but this is another one sounds amazing and uh i'm not sure when it was pressed but i need to like research more on how to figure that stuff out so third one doesn't really have anything to do with uh chicago although there is kind of one thing i can 
So next thing up we have is a kind of a worn record as far as the cover, but um, I'm not collecting them for the covers now, so which doesn't really bother me. But either way, it is hard time from the Who. This is 80s Who, I believe. Might be super late 70s. No, 82, I figured. Um, I was first turned on to The Who by, I think it was a Chevy commercial. They used uh, Eminence Front in it, but that's not true. I, I, Eminence Front was everywhere uh, back in the day for a long time. Pretty big song. But um, I don't know if that's supposed to be the new version of Tommy. Instead of playing pinball, he's playing a, a video game or an arcade game. I don't know. But um so side one you got Athena, it's your turn. Cook's County. Cook County, Chicago, no. It's hard, dangerous, and then eminence front. And then on side two, I've known no war. One life's enough, one at a time. Why did I fall for that? A man is a man and cry if you want. And uh this is a good sounding record. It needs to be clean. There's a lot of surface noise, but um, it kind of sucks that Eminence Front is at the end of side one because uh, if you know the way a record works, uh, on the inside of the record, it actually has less distance to travel and therefore there's less information in there. And um, I don't know, I think it should have been further to the beginning of the album, but um this was recorded when, you know, I think digital kind of started really to bloom. So they didn't really think about that as much in them days. But I guess we're going to stay on the Chicago theme. But uh, <laughs> this is Ray Manzarek's 1974 album. Uh, yeah, the whole thing started with rock and roll. Now it's out of control. And uh, found this for $9. It's just so cool. And uh, this is another great sounding record. Uh, track listings are the whole thing started with rock and roll and now it's out of control. I keep like spitting, I'm sorry. Please don't take it as disrespect. <laughs> and then uh, you got The Gambler, Whirling, Dervish, Begin the World Again. And then inside two, we got I Wake Up Screaming, Art Deco Fandango. Bicentennial Blues, that's a very, sounds very Ray Manzarek, very deep voice. Bicentennial Blues, I can't even, sorry. And then Perfumed Garden. Then uh, Ray Manzarek, obviously, the uh, keyboardist, organist, I believe he wrote some songs. Uh, filled in for Jim a lot when Jim couldn't sing, and uh, has a pretty kind of reminiscent of Jim's voice kind of or can emulate it well uh these two or well yeah these two next ones um are from a band that's also really special to me that my dad got me into and um these i was so happy to find and uh the first one is dire straits love over gold and um dire straits is mark Knopfler is probably one of my favorite guitarists or uh you know musicians in general but um this is yeah one of my favorites uh i would also like to collect all of mark Knopfler's work uh side one telegraph road and then side two is private investigations i should know side two by my side and then industrial disease on side two which is one of my favorite songs probably in the world uh i think it was one of my dad's favorite songs too then you got Love Over Gold, and then a uh, number three, It Never Rains. Absolute bangers. Slappers, I think, as the kids say now. Boppers? No, it, it slaps. It slaps hard, that's what they say. So, uh, definitely one of my favorites. Not horrible condition. Uh, all of these, the records are in really good condition. Uh, the rec or the the covers are if anything what suffers from them but then we got gam unique they were uh i think is romeo and juliet on this no 
I know that they had a, I believe it was a French director who directed Romeo and Juliet and Tunnel of Love. Uh, this has Lady Rider on it. This doesn't have Tunnel of Love, no. And um, so, become unique. I think they're very much into a, a very kind of influenced by the French, I would imagine. I don't know. But um, this is another good one. I don't know why they have on the back... It says it says soft. I don't know what that's all about, but uh, once upon a time in the West, side side one is soft apparently. Uh, where do you think you're going? Or no, news is number two, which is also soft. Then you got where do you think you're going, and then come unique, and then side two is lady writer, angel of mercy, portobello blue, single handed sailor, and follow me home. Yeah, I would like to also, like I've already said, I'd like to get all of uh, his work, all of Dire Straits' stuff on vinyl. And um, all of those were original. This is a new album that I bought. And I guess this would be kind of a good thing to segue into uh, the subject of why I think vinyl sounds better than digital. And... Um, so this is a new copy and this may be a little sound a little contradictive but stay with me here this is a new copy of jethro tull aqualung and it is the 2011 stephen wilson stereo remix so i remember when this came out and i remember listening to it and i honestly remember going wow it was literally like he separated every single instrument and um, vocal, everything, made it as good as they possibly could, and then remixed everything right back together, which was digital, obviously digital. So um, now, a friend of mine over at Fading Pedals, um, we'd kind of been talking to each other on Facebook, and um, he brought up a very good a rabbit hole that I kind of went down. He even described it as that, and um, he brought up the fact of the way the lineage in Germany, the way how they passed down um, the art of reproducing music and um, standards for pressing vinyl and hand down practices to the future generations in a more proper manner than uh, most of the world does. And being an auto technician, I can tell you right off the bat, the Germans do things a lot differently. Now, a lot of us complain that their stuff is over-engineered, that it doesn't have to be, you know, so the way that it is. And um, one thing I will tell you is uh, they got their shit together. <laughs> so the thing that he brought up was that, you know, the practices that they hand down and stuff like that so i found this it was only 24 dollars, but like my other two records that i was talking about i said i wonder if they have you know something in common because they're both made in germany and um they both sound great which also will segue us i guess kind of back into uh the walmart thing um so I definitely don't think that Walmart sells bad records by any means. Um, you can get, you know, bad records anywhere. And by bad, it probably has to do with how they're pressed and the way they're converted from either digital to analog or, you know, if they're analog all the way through. So I'll go ahead and post a link to a video that just came out today from Just Audio. And it's on a, a new Yamaha system. And this system is absolutely amazing. Uh, after you watch this video, go ahead and check that out. But um, it has something to do with, uh, as far as the phono part of it goes, somehow there's no ground. And uh, the signal going from the phono cartridge all the way to the speakers is what they call a floating signal. And uh, I haven't really researched it or looked into that too much. I'm sure it's a secret. But, um, 
you got to think. So Yamaha, who is a very, very well-respected company for audio files, um, not super duper high end, but I mean, they make really good things. You got to think they make instruments. They make a lot of exhaust pipes for vehicles and things like that. So they're very good into tuning, uh, acoustically. Um, and what are they using to reference their brand new top of the line system? This brand new top of the line, uh, turntable, this, as you would call new fangled phonograph thing. <laughs> and, um, so I really do, I, I like digital, but, um, I haven't heard to the extent what vinyl can actually bring to you. I feel like one of the problems that I'm coming up with is compression. Um, we all know everything this right now that you're listening to is compressed. Uh, most things are compressed. I've heard that it's good to go to Amazon Music because they have things like flak files and uh, stuff like that with music that isn't as compressed and stuff like that. Uh, the dynamic range with vinyl, in my opinion, I haven't heard anything that has dynamic range like that. Um, you can probably go back to, you know, reel to reel, uh, tapes, tapes were pretty good back in the day. Uh, I remember hearing really good dynamic range. Uh, my family was pretty big into tapes. Uh, my dad recorded a lot of old time radio and, um, my uncle has a very, very accomplished, uh, system uh very avid collector very big music buff uh definite auto definite audiophile and um he would always my dad would send him tapes and my uncle would record onto them so he would record uh onto tapes from records and then my dad would let me dub them and um so we always kind of bought good tapes made sure that the tape players played the tapes properly and um, one thing that came with that was, you know, pops and clicks that you would hear, I would hear on the tapes. And uh, this kind of brings me to another point as far as not being a snob. And, um, you know, the thing is, is some people like clicks and pops and things like that. It's, you know, it's comforting. It is reminiscent, you know, it reminds you of the olden days. Uh, if you think about, you know, a lot of the millennials now and video games, it's a huge kind of market here on YouTube now. I don't want to say market, but it's a very, very big culture. It's definitely one thing people like to, you know, reminisce and, uh, think back to the olden days and, uh, and, you know, a lot of people find comfort in that. So we find ways to, uh, make that prevalent in our life to kind of regain something from the past. I guess the bottom line is, if it makes you happy, then you're doing the right thing. Unless if you're impeding on somebody else's right to be happy, or rights in general. Because, as much as we'd like to believe, the universe doesn't exactly revolve around any one person in particular. We're all in this together. So I say, go ahead, spin your records, play your CDs, use your streaming services, do whatever makes you happy. Just please, don't be a dick.